was still acting a fool. So I can only imagine how, you know, I, I, I womaned up instead of manned up. But I still remember putting her to sleep and saying, Mom, I'll be right back. And right back was five hours later, you know. <laughs> so I was still acting up. But how did you treat the mother of your child? Like, were you mad at her for getting pregnant like it was her fault? Or, you know, did you... What was your thought? I, 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 I think I could have treated her better, but we... we relationship to be 13 year old parents mm -hmm. she was she was the same age i was mm -hmm. so i didn't treat her bad per se but it was one of those situations where um her family situation wasn't i guess quote unquote as good as mine and as a child you know you got some type of arrogance with that like you're not on my level type of situation mm -hmm. so there were times where i would um you know i would get upset with her over things and i was doing the same stuff you know, so, but we, we, the, the bad thing is we never really got a chance to grow in that communication and because we were so young, but as far as treating each other a certain way, I, I treated her pretty well. Was I didn't blame her for anything. I, 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 my mother gave me a strong sense of accountability. I knew that everything that happened to me was my fault. So um, that was something that we, we never had a problem with. We always, she never had a problem with me treating her any type of negative way since that time. Yeah. So Aladine Davis is here. He's the author of Life 101 Lessons from a 13 year old father and uh, I was going to ask you that uh, question too what what happened to uh, the mother of your child how old is your child now she's 15 years old 15 mm. years old how old are you now 28 you're 28 and uh, is what kind of relationship do y'all have now Me, myself and, and the mother and my, we have a we, we speak she lives in Louisiana now so we do speak to each other. Um, we obviously don't see each other that often, but uh, we, we speak. We still speak. Her and my daughter speak every day. Uh, but we speak. We make, I make sure that she's aware of everything that um, is going on in my daughter's life and just try to um, actually try to motivate her to understand that just because she's not there every day doesn't mean she's not her mother. So you, you know? your daughter resides with you? Yes. And since when? Uh, since she was born? Or? No, for the past two and a half years she, mm -hmm. she's been with me. What brought that change about? I need a custody of my daughter. <laughs> I mean, that just of, for well, that was one of my goals. Or? No, that was one of my goals since um, I was a teenager is to go and get custody of my daughter. So when I graduated college, that was one, something that, um, that I started working towards as soon as I graduated. Took some time, but um, after, I want to say three years after I graduated, we got that done. But um, yeah, she's um, they have a great relationship. Um, but me, with me and my daughter's mother, I wouldn't say it's a great relationship, but we communicate well enough and co-parent well enough to, to make sure that it, there's no, there's nothing, no static there at all. Yeah. That's all I need, Davis here, author of Life 101, Lessons from a 13-Year-Old uh, Father. And so you just recently got custody of your, your daughter. Yes. Um, well, you being so close in age, <clears throat> she's 15 and you're 28. Mm -hmm. What is that like? I mean, do how do y'all relate to one another? <laughs> it's it's strange in in a way because there's often many times where she has you can tell that she has that frustrated you're supposed to be the cool dad why is every, why is everything so strict why are there so many rules why are there so many you know so she goes through that a lot but at the same time because we're so close in age certain things we relate to like me and my mother didn't listen to the same music yeah you know a lot of the music that she and I and I'm so happy about this she likes more of the music that I like she more likes more of the 90s type <laughs> of era as opposed to what's going on now so a lot of the times the stuff that I listen to rubs off her she loves to listen to the same stuff I do certain TV shows we watch together movies uh, documentaries we uh, kind of relate in that way I think more than myself and at least myself and my mother have so it helped us out a lot with um, just building our relationship because of that age do you I'm, I was I'm just just thinking about back to the custody. Do you think, because these are girls, yes. and I know girls need their mothers. Yes. And um, I, one of my children had lived with her father for a couple years. And it, it definitely is a lot different. You know, it, do you think it's a hindering her by having her so far away from her mother and that female role model and that, you know, that, that somebody that should be there, like boys need daddy, and need daddy close? Yeah. Do you think that mommy and she made me mommy a little closer? No. Um, <laughs> so, it, mom, mommy, you're a better parent. I believe so. I wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't have got custody if I didn't think the situation would have worked better for my okay. daughter. And okay. I think that um, once you look at and, and and it's in the book, so to kind of give you the information, the detailed information. When you look at where she was before I got her mm -hmm. to where she is now, mm -hmm. it's an amazing, it's, it's, it's a 180. It's right. a completely different situation. If I wouldn't have went and got her, then I might have been a grandfather. 
Okay. I might have been, or I might have been mm-hmm. going to, you know, I might have had a child in the juvie system, or I might have have a child that's failing out. It, it was that it could have easily fell into that situation. That's your memory. Exactly. So mm-hmm. now where she is right now, she's an honor student. She's, uh, she plays basketball. She's on the dance team. She does track. She's involved in things that she's never been involved in anything mm-hmm. before. You know, so it's a completely, completely different situation that's helping her. Well, since she's with me and no no hats off to you know I'm not patting myself on the back or anything I just realized that the situation would have been better with her with me right we got a phone call here Solomon Davis he's the author of Life 101 Lessons from a 13 year old father go right here you're on the BJ Murphy show hello how are you doing well uh, I'm doing very well thank you um I, I thank you for uh, making this book and it's very important to a lot of teens out there because I'm a teen myself I'm 19 years old and I think the book is going to be good. It's just sell out big time. And mm-hmm. I think people should read the book to understand, especially young women in general, to understand that this is a serious issue in, in our time today and our youth. And yeah. we should be aware of it. Let me ask you, how old were you when you had, I had your baby? Uh, I'm, I don't have a baby right now. I'm, oh, I thought you were. I thought you were. <laughs> no, no, okay. No. All right. All right. But keep it tight. Don't never have one. <laughs> uh, you know, unemployment rates is going up. <laughs> Stay okay. by yourself. I want to ask you a question. Um, yes, too, parents great. are listening, right? And yes. you know, you got a beautiful, shapely, thirteen-year-old daughter. Mm-hmm. I mean, BZ has beautiful daughters, mm-hmm. and. You, you see these girls now, and they look like they're 20 years old. Very true. Okay, so now how do I keep a brother that's 13 years old uh, that's like, you know, hi, you know what I'm saying? Like little Wayne, you say, you know what I'm saying? You know, like, that, you know? like we, you know, how do I keep my daughter from getting pregnant? If, if you was defensing somebody from when you were 13. Yeah, what, what would have stopped you from being able to... What Lack has, of better words, hit hit that. What, <laughs> what would have yeah, stopped you at 13? <laughs> uh, what did stop me? Well, not me having times. a baby. Um, we don't want them to have a baby before they decide to stop. Um, yeah. it, for for me, I, uh, and I draw from those experience, uh, experiences because at the time, obviously, I was sexually active and there were uh, it wasn't like every girl was. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there were times where it, it didn't go down and now there, um, those experiences that I've saw, I can I kind of put that, you know, I kind of place myself in a role to be able to provide my daughter with certain things. Um, one thing, and, uh, and it's not to say that single mothers cannot do this, but I found that the females that I grew up around that had a strong relationship with their father, they waited longer. Mm. Yes, sir. I, and I, I'm, and like I said, not to say that that can't happen right. in a household with a single mother, but that that was obvious with us. I mean, it was when you were young and that's and you were sexually active. I mean, we got smart real quick. It was kind of like you find out who was easier to go after. And certain ones you like, I don't got time for that what because they had this thing about them like they had stuff to do. They don't got time to be talking to you. I'll talk to you when I have time. Mm-hmm. And. That's where keeping them involved, being in their lives, keep doing family activities. That's something. How many times do you see people have set family activities? We do this together weekly or biweekly or whatever the case may be. Those situations, those girls were the ones that that weren't trying to have it, and those girls ended up being the ones that we wanted to be with, you know. Right. So instead of have sex with, so um, that is what scared me away. Then that's what I try to provide for my daughter now. Now, awesome. do you think it was just the fact that there was a dad there, or was dad crazy and you were scared of dad? No, honestly, um, a lot of times you don't get to meet dad. But the thing about it is, when you talk to these, you, you talk to little girls, and, and to this day, you talk to girls. The father comes up right, in everything when they have this special relationship and this love for their father. And it's, if it's a conversation that happens, their father is going to come up. And you start to see this this certain relationship, and it's like, oh, what are you doing this? I want to come through. And they're like, oh, no, nah, I'm going to so-and-so with my dad, or I'm going to so-and-so with my family. And you, they have the structure of events and things and activities that they do with their family. And that, those type of things, when you have a, a structure, when you always have a schedule, you have things to do all the time, obviously, you, you know, you, you don't have any uh, uh, idle time. Mm-hmm. And without that idle time, it's less opportunity. Let's not say, now, that happened to some of those girls also where they slipped up and they, and they might have gotten pregnant or just or, or been sexually mm-hmm. active. But when you have less idle time, it's less opportunity for those types of things to happen. Right. And your family has to be involved for that idle time right. to dwindle. Life 101, a lesson from a 15-year-old father. you on this.
Like, you know, I was sitting here just kind of thinking when you was like, took your daughter and this and the other. But it's so important. It really is. I'm a daddy's girl. My daddy um, moved to California when I was like 10. But from California, the effects that he had on me made me wait. And it was times, even as an adult, he'd be like, who at your house? And I'm like, ain't nobody at my house. And I'm an adult. So, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. my, my dad just had that effect. But one of the awesome things that he, um, he gave me, um, and I think that you're probably giving to your daughter, is um, affirming who she is. You know, and when you affirm a young lady, when a man affirms, she, she knows it. She knows it. Her confidence level is up here. So I just wanted to commend you on that. Thank you. Appreciate it. Definitely. Yes, yes, definitely. And I want to add on to what she was just saying. I think not, not just father, not just mother. I think relationships in general. Yes. When you have a bad relationship in your life, I know for myself, you know, I had a weird type of relationship with my father where it wasn't a, a good relationship from about 15 to 28. And it, wow. I noticed what type of life I was living during those years. Now, once my father and I reconciled, and we, we came to a good place. Also, my mother and I reconciled, and we came to a good place. I was in a better place, mm-hmm. mentally mm-hmm. and emotionally. So I don't think it's, you know, a father can be present, and a mother can be present, and you can have everybody in your household. But if those relationships aren't good relationships, you're still going to have a bad effect on those children. Mm-hmm. So don't just think, dads and moms out there, that because you're there, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. everything's going to go right. No, you need to be not just present. physically present, yeah. but, you know, emotionally and, and mentally there as well because relationships have a counter effect or, you know, on how on how we live. That's right. Life one on one Lessons from a 13-year-old father, Saladin Davis. You're on a B.J. Murphy show. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. I wanted to say I thank God for this conversation, man. <laughs> <laughs> for real, for real. Myself, I, I, um, I have two children that I, that I didn't raise, and I actually know, I mean, it's, the, it's different. You know, the, things, the thing that my children that was raised in New Jersey, that they're into, like, you know, my son, he's a thief. Uh, he's a liar and a thief, but, but uh, who he was. <laughs> but initially, uh, first and foremost, let me say, I may be wrong, maybe this is my opinion, but I, I think it's always, uh, always a man's fault. I'm talking about whether it be finances, work, relationship, family. You know, there's a man there. It's his fault. Uh, that being said, I, I have, uh, you know, my, my daughter that's raised in the house with me, you know, my little girl. She's only five. But, you know, we strive to make sure she knows body parts of boys and girls. You know, because we're not raising little girls to be little girls. We're raising little girls to be, to be you know, women. Yeah, true. So... If someone was to touch her, she's able to say, you know, you, you're not supposed to touch me here. Or why, what you doing with your penis out? Oh. <laughs> my 18-year-old, she just had a baby a month ago. That's when she was, she was raised by her mother's side of the family in New Jersey. But... <laughs> yeah, it's emotional for you, brother. Yeah, but I, I got I got a, a 22-year-old daughter. She's in Texas now in college. You know, I, I have a strong relationship with her all through her life. I remember when she was 16 years old, she called me from Texas and said she was so sad and crying because, so so sad and crying, she's so sad and crying because her best friend, her boyfriend laid down with her best friend and had sex. Now, while she's crying on the phone, I told her I was so happy that she called me, but I'm also happy that it happened because... You were strong enough not to let him go between your legs as of yet. It's so much more thing to do, to focus on. Right. He said she told him she wasn't ready. Next thing you know, he laying down with her best friend. Mm. So those are those. So you you don't got rid of rid of two snakes in your garden with one stone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To make I'm not taking up a lot of time, but to make a long story short, it's the man's obligation to make sure that he protects, provides, supports. We, yes. as men, females too, but as men, we more so out in this world. That's females right. too, but, but we be out here in this night air, we out here. Some of us made it from the block, could walk it. I'm one of them. So I'm able to talk about my, with my children, even when I didn't raise. I'm able to, able to talk to them about of knowledge, wisdom, you know, sex, um, males, females, finances, futuristic things. It, it's, it's, it's supposed to be done, and that That's builds right. the wall. That's, That's right. hard. Yeah, thank so you. Even in, even, even in your pocket. 
Hey, bro. Hey, brother. Hey, man. Thank you, man. You deep. You, you, yes. You, I mean, real conversation. Us. What what part of New Jersey are you from? No, 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 no. I'm I, I'm from South North Carolina. I thought you said you was from New Jersey. No, it's kids. No, kids, no, my kids. Children, okay. My two of them. Okay. I got I got a son in Georgia. They were raised in North New Jersey. Ooh, okay. okay. Mm. That's, That's what I was about to say. I was getting to. Everybody kid. around me is from New Jersey. <laughs> my <laughs> yeah. wife, Saladin, you from yes, New Jersey. Yes, sir. Hey, Tamika from Jersey. I'm from Jersey. I'm from Jersey. Jersey. Brick City. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody from <laughs> <laughs> New York. You from Pennsylvania. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but um, yeah, man, this is deep. But man, we thank you so much, Saladin. Man, I know you're going around speaking. Um, you should go, and we should help you get, to get into these uh, Charlotte Mecklenburg schools and preach this um, book to the young people so you can help them avoid Absolutely. this trap Absolutely. of teenage pregnancy. Uh, mm-hmm. Absolutely. I've been uh, I've, I've worked closely with Ransom Middle School for about a year now, also Olympic High School down um, around probably close to this area, and um, definitely have been working and, and helping people understand that this story can help anybody, not just if you're having a child. Uh, it's lessons from a 13-year-old father because there's a lesson that follows each part of life that I learned in that part of life to help me uh, be able to get to where I am today. And those lessons are profound and be able to help anybody out today in, in, in any hardship. Okay. So definitely we're going to get around the whole city and take it a, a, lot, a lot farther than just this city, um, God willing. And we're going to definitely make a lot of impact. We change lives out here, man. So you must be in love yes, because on this book, Listen to this. He's got, <laughs> I seen it. He's got Saladin currently resides Uh-oh. in Charlotte Uh-oh. with his girlfriend Uh-oh. Shelly and his Shelly. girlfriend. Shelly. Oh, he put it in the book. So he oh, yeah, it ain't even his wife yet. Oh. Look, I'm shouting you out, Shelly. Everybody know. Everybody and, know. And, hey. if you, and, and I'm not even going to spoil it for you. Read the book. Okay. And, you'll, and, you'll, and you'll get to understand why that love is so deep. Wow. You know, so you'll, you'll be able to get to understand that. Oh, awesome. shout out to Shelly Hey, girl. Yeah, she, she down in Spartanburg. <laughs> she down in med school. Get to study on. You better not be listening. <laughs> <laughs> and you can, what can we keep in, keep in contact with you? Uh, you can, uh, first and foremost, the website. Uh, the, the website is www.lifesparkweb.com. That's www.lifesparkweb.com. It's spelled exactly how it sounds. That's the website for everything that is, you know, motivational speaking, the book, everything that we got going on under my business, LifeSpark LLC. Uh, Facebook, um, I'm under Saladin Davis, uh, Professional Motivator. So you can find me on Facebook there. Twitter, Saladin underscore speaks. Instagram, Saladin Davis. Uh, we're, we're on everything. And uh, email at uh, Saladin at LifeSparkWeb. Dot com. You can also get the book at the on the website. And big announcement, big announcement, big announcement. For the rest of the holiday season leading up to January 1st, every additional book that you buy, because I know we need some gifts and we need some positive gifts for these boys and girls out there. One, The first book, copy is seventeen fifty. Every book after that that you buy is 30% off mm. from the website That's and good. in person, anything. That's, That's 30% off of every additional book you buy. You have sons, daughters, nieces, nephews, grandchildren that need something positive in their lives. So to be able to get something that can be life-changing, yeah. that can be life-changing yes. for $12? That's right. Mm-hmm. Come on. That's right. Come on. Let's do it. Let's get do on the it. website, www.lifesparkweb.com. Definitely do that. Um, one to also shout out, it'll be a lot of promotion around this, but I'm going to have a, an event surrounding fatherhood where we're going to have a discussion and a book signing on January 17th. I know it's far out, but we're going to have a lot, a lot of promotion around this at Red um, 28 up in uh, Noda. January 17th at Red 28. We're going to be there from, we're going to be there from 6 to 9 All right. at Red 28, January 17th. But get the book, get, get some gifts, uh, some stock and stuff for the little, for the teenage and, and preteens out there so that they can get these lessons now. All right.